Hello, this is uh, Professor Joseph Holbrook uh, teaching uh, ISS 1120 Introduction to Social Science. And tonight our lesson is uh, Chapter 16 from Hunt and Colander, The Organization of Economic Activities. So let's go right into it. The Nature of an Economy Social organization of society which produces or distributes economic goods, that is the economy. So the nature of an economy, and I think I started in the wrong, no, that's good. Um, so the nature of the economy includes complexity, and there are four functions of a, a modern economy. It, it, the, the economy should determine the kinds of goods to be produced. It should determine the amount of each good to be produced. It determines the resources allocated to a goods allocated to a goods output, and it determines the ultimate division of goods. So some of the problems that modern societies are facing with economics is how can scarce resources satisfy as fully as possible the ever expanding wants of all members of a society. It has to economize and allocate. Uh, we, we're going to give a quick overview of several different economic systems beginning with the Roman slave economy and then medieval feudalism, mercantilism, which I will explain later, and then what we call the market economy, which is basically what we have today. So the Roman slave economy, uh, the Roman economy was basically an agricultural economy, but it also was built, built on military conquest. And uh, during the expansion of the Roman Empire, there was a fantastic increase in wealth amongst the Roman elite and a growth of slavery. The slaves were the people who were conquered in the expansion of the Roman Empire. In the beginning of the uh, Roman Empire, or the Roman Republic, most agriculturalists were uh, small farmers. But they were forced out as wealth increased and slavery increased. More and more of the uh, Roman agricultural system was based on slave labor, which in turn meant that there was a very low level of uh, very low costs of food for the average Roman citizen. Another society that uh, the Romans were not the only society that was oriented around slavery. In the ancient Greece as well there was a heavy use of slavery. For example the Spartans. Uh, the Spartans had conquered some of their neighbors and turned them into what they called Helots, uh, which was a slave class, and there was uh, nearly seven Helots or sla Spartan slaves to every one Spartan citizen. Uh, so there were a multitude of slaves who found their way to Italy, were put to, uh, in the Roman Empire, were put to work on large agricultural estates. It was land investment and agriculture which generated great wealth in Italy. And most of you may have be familiar with the uh, TV show Spartacus, which deals with slavery in uh, the Roman Empire. As the Roman Empire collapsed, uh, a new economic system emerged called feudalism in, the, in medieval Europe. Around the 9th and 10th centuries, there were numerous evasions in Western Europe. Muslims attacked across the southern coast of Europe and France. The Magyars attacked from Western Asia and settled on the plains of Hungary. Forays, they made forays into Western Europe. After the Battle of Lichfield in Germany in 955, the Magyars converted to Christianity and created the Kingdom of Hungary. The worst attacks, however, came from the Northmen, or Norsemen of Scandinavia, also known to us as the Vikings. Um, this is a picture of a medieval castle. So what does this make you think of when you see it? This massive ramparts that probably has a moat around it, a drawbridge. It makes you one think of military security. And that's military insecurity, 
is what characterized the medieval period. Unlike the Roman uh, period where you had the Pax Romana. So the Vikings attacked England around the 11th century. You see a picture up here of uh, the Vikings attacking England. That was uh, painted in the 11th century. Uh, some of you may have watched uh, the TV series about uh, Ragnar Lothbrok, Lothbrok, who was a uh, famous Viking. Feudalism was based on a an exchange barter system, an agricultural system. The money economy of the Roman Empire had ceased to exist, and it broke down. Feudalism broke down into small, fragmented sources of authority in small rural villages. Uh, mercantilism began to arise in the early period of uh, in the early period modern period. Mercantilism was a very different system that accompanied the rise of modern states such as Spain and Portugal, later on England and France. And it was the idea that the colonies such as the American colonies, South America, North America, the Caribbean, that these colonies existed only as resources for the mother country. Uh, for example, if you were a colonist living in Lima, Peru, and you wanted to, your wife wanted to buy some clothes uh, in the latest fashion from from Europe, you would have to, uh, you would not be able to buy it directly from sh uh, European ships such as French or English ships that were traveling through your port. You would have to send the money up to Panama, the money, the silver would have to cross over the Panama Canal, be loaded on the ships, sail to Spain, where the, the silver would be used to purchase probably clothing produced in England or uh, Amsterdam or France, shipped back to Spain, and then shipped back to Panama, across the Panama Canal, and back down to Peru. It was a very unwieldy system. Uh, this was also the age of piracy. So you had the Spanish silver silver fleets that would, uh, you would have a number of Spanish ships carrying gold and silver that would gather together to try to uh, travel back to Spain uh, within a fleet for protection. And you had uh, the English pirate or privateer, Sir Francis Drake in 1578. In 1628, you had a Dutch uh, privateer who was also an admiral who captured the entire Spanish treasure fleet. His name was Pete Hain. Mercant mercantilism was impractical. Spain sent its silver on religious war, spent its silver on religious wars rather than investing in manufacturing. Most of the silver of the New World went through Spain to England and Holland uh, rather than staying in Spain. Um, there's a major difference between planned and unplanned economies. An unplanned economy relies on free markets to control the economy. The United States and Western Europe represent unplanned economies or free markets. Planned economies rely on the government to do the planning. Uh, such would be the case in Cuba and China up until very recently. Although, who knows if that's about to change with the recent changes in U.S. foreign policy towards Cuba. So a market economy is an economic system relying on the initiative of private citizens for the production of economic goods. Uh, I forgot to type into my notes that in 1776 a famous book was published called The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. This was part of the Scottish Enlightenment. And Adam Smith was really one of the first economists and he was the father of the idea of the free market. He also was the man who came up with the term laissez-faire, which is a French term meaning let it be or let it happen, let it, let it work on its own without interference. So in the uh, market economy, there are no production quotas by the government. Prices and profits are not set by the government. The chief incentive is profit. In practice, the government regulates to some degree and provides legal framework. So here's a picture of the, uh, the cycle of a free market economy. I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, you have income going to the right you have spending going to the left you also have uh 
I have trouble seeing it. Land and labor and capital flowing uh, up here. Here you have spending and services. Over here you have uh, I can't read it. Taxes being paid. So uh, this is the flow of a free market. A pragmatic market economy is what we have today. That's a little different than the uh, the more classical laissez-faire free market economies that came into being in the uh, 1800s, or the actually the early 19th century. There's a few differences between modern, planned, and unplanned market economies. Uh, pragmatic market economies use markets as a central way of allocating resources. Regu they regulate and control those markets and they change the market outcomes to varying degrees. So for example, we recently had Easter and uh, people all over the United States bought Easter eggs and chocolate. Um, the question one might ask is how did the uh, companies that produce chocolate know how much chocolate to prepare to sell? And that's, that's what we call allocating resources. And so in a free market economy, there are people who do estimates, who uh, plan production based on previous year's data. And uh, it, it happens without the government having to try to determine a particular outcome. All modern economies are pragmatic market economies. Uh, I might disagree with the book on this point. I, I don't know that Cuba is a... Uh, represents a pragmatic market economy, although China and North Vietnam has certain uh, Vietnam has certainly moved in that direction. Uh, but I doubt that Cuba and North Korea are pragmatic modern economies. Government there is some government involvement, but prag pragmatism is the driving force, differing only by institutional historical settings. It affects how government interacts with markets such as. China is an example of government, heavy government involvement. The United States has limited government involvement. Uh, we want to, before we close, we want to talk briefly about socialism. Socialism is an alternative form of economic production, alternative to free markets, that is. It was developed in the mid-1800s in reaction to the problems caused by non-regulated market economies. Uh, utopian socialists promoted peaceful change. Radicals such as Marx, Karl Marx, and Friedrich Engels proposed revolt against an organized structure. Soviet-style socialism uh, was the, perhaps the most extreme under Stalin. It made decisions about allocation and distribution of goods. Communism is a type of Soviet-style socialism. The Communist Party played key role, a key role in the in the uh, direction of the economy, and involved included key political beliefs from communist writers. It saw capitalism as doomed and as the enemy. G socialist governments owns the means of production and promotes income e equalization. And there's also many different kinds of socialism. So that is a quick introduction to the organiza organization of economic activities. We've talked about the Roman slave economy. We talked about uh, medieval feudalism. Uh, very briefly, we talked about uh, mercantilism of the early modern age. And then we talked about laissez-faire free market economies and then pragmatic market economies and finally we talked about various kinds of socialism and communism and unplanned and planned economies thank you very much good luck on your quiz